Yeah. And in the meantime, the hermaphrodite monster, who is unexplained in this one, so Just I guess you're here. to assume it maybe is the monster from the first one. Yeah. You don't really ever, it's never really said. It decides to start stalking and knocking them off. Mm-hmm. So, and in some ways, maybe some standard story stuff, but this is by no means standard horror movie stuff, like, visually. Exactly. So, let's uh, take a, let's take a look at, at a little bit of Entrails of a Beautiful Woman first. So, let's roll it. Ah, uh, he's here on the ground. Ah, 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 Yeah, that movie as it goes on, it, it takes a little bit to, to get moving, but the climax, it gets crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, you and your climax. Yeah, okay. well, you know, that's that's what I'm usually alone. <laughs> but um, that's a whole different thing. But, you know, I mean... What I can't understand uh -oh. is that um, it's alright for them to show these underage virgin schoolgirls getting raped. Right. Now let's stress here that they're actresses in the movie playing underage school girls. But they could be, because I can't really tell. But yeah. they could be well, I mean, yeah, we them. didn't see the forms, but I'm going to assume they're the, underage. <laughs> Alright, but anyway, these the virgin school races. girls getting raped, so and, you see their boobies and everything, and but yet they blur out their hoo-ha. Yeah, the, the pubic, uh, pubic area in Japanese films up until actually, I think it was like 99 or 2000, it was it was literally illegal mm -hmm. in films to show any pubic nudity in Japanese. And everything else is all right, you know, right. blood spurting. Yeah, they they're young girl raping and killing. They are actually right. the most um, liberal of any cinema in the world in that way. I mean, they, especially sexually, their mm. their sexual films such as these will go to extremes, especially dealing with like sadomasochism, bondage, and you know, yeah, they are really violence. out there. But that's that one detail it has always been censored so in both these films it's like why bother <laughs> yeah well well that's why they end up going to such other extremes is because there's that one thing they can't show so they always just go as far as they can with other things to try to get away with it and uh, both of these films have the optical blurring on mm -hmm. the pubic nudity because um, both of these films apparently were shot as hardcore Sex features, believe it or not. Oh my God! Uh, yeah. Far from it. Yeah, you don't you don't see any penetration. Right. Well, that, which is the same with all Japanese, yeah. uh, you know, hardcore films as well. So, but I was talking to the producer, not the producer, but the, re the guys who released these films, uh -huh. uh, Don May Jr. from Synapse Entertainment, mm -hmm. and he explained a, a little bit about that to me. So, actually, I have that interview. You do? Yes, I well, do. I gotta hear this. So this will be uh, Don May and his partner explaining to us a little bit about, you know, Guts of a Virgin and then Trails of the, uh, and Trails of the be Beautiful Woman, Guts of a, you know. Are there subtitles so we can understand? Uh, them? No, they're English. Oh, okay, they're, they're, good. They're, they're regular Joes from, <laughs> I believe, Michigan. But uh, they're also going to talk about some of their other movies they've released as well. Okay. Because so, uh, they put out some other stuff we've talked about, like Blue Sunshine. And, oh, yeah. Which is not Love one of that one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. And Lamora, A Child's Tale of the Supernatural, which just is an incredible film. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll maybe talk about it later. So let's take a look at the interview with these with Synapse Entertainment. Enjoy. Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, out there in TV land, Sandy Kaufman and Neon Madness checking you out. We're here at uh, the table for Synapse Films. They've put out some damn fine movies lately. Been around for quite a while. Classics like uh, Organ, down here get a shot of Organ. Wild Zero, the uh, Entrails of the Virgin, Guts of the Virgin coming out very soon. They made a little premiere, early premiere here at the convention. Of course, classics like Dead Beat and Dawn. Uh, and you know, lots and lots of great stuff. So we got we got the guys here. I'll let them introduce themselves. I'm Don May. <laughs> Jerry Taylor. Alright, and these are the gentlemen, the brains behind 
synapse films. So, um, you got in, Don, you got in this game pretty early with the laser disc. Right, yeah, back in 94, I decided to go ahead and jump into the business uh, with both feet. And uh, we started in the laser disc business with another company. And we did really, really well with that other company. And uh, after about four years, I decided to partner up with Jerry here and uh, start a new company, Synapse Films, where we would concentrate on DVDs. And uh, it's been six years, almost seven years going now. And uh, we're going better than ever. Is there any sort of uh, movies when you started Synapse you knew that you had to go after? Well, we immediately went after you know things like street trash and uh, brain damage. Brain damage. Which, you know, brain damage was a great one because we were we, we actually lived very close to one of the people who made the movie, so we were able to actually luckily get uh, brain damage that way. Um, and street trash. Uh, Roy Funkus had been a friend of mine for a while, and uh, working on Document of the Dead first, and then we'll be doing street trash later with him. So you know, those were basically the two that we really wanted out the door, you know, with, with our company. Uh, and, uh, you know, just through, you know, connections at even shows like this and through friends of other people, we were able to actually just, you know, start a whole library. Yeah, you know, and the connections that I had with the laser disc industry, you know, I carried over to the company. So, you know, that's, it, was, it was great, you know, doing the laser disc thing was great for a while, but laser discs died out, they and died DVD out. took over. What, what, what is your end of uh, this yeah. enterprise? Well, Don and I have been friends since uh, Don was a kid. <laughs> okay, and you used to beat him up on the playground, that sort of thing? No, but we, it's actually a very interesting story how we met. Uh, I was about 21, 22, he was 14, he answered one of my free ads in the Fangoria magazine back when they used to have them, saying, Tape Trader, my list, your list is right. mine, right. let's trade. That's how, that's how the horror genre stayed alive through that shitty slump back in yeah. the mid to late 80s. Yeah, that's so right. right. People and, uh, trading back and forth. What I do is, you know, I have some connections in the business that landed us some of our titles, and uh, I... Mostly I negotiate uh, the contracts and uh, I pack the boxes and do the shipping and Don is off in uh, L.A. you know, producing the DVDs. And it's a great partnership because we're like brothers, you know, we've been friends since we were literally kids. Fantastic. One of my favorite things about you guys' this company, besides that you guys went so great to me at the convention, too, is uh, that you guys are really, I mean, unafraid to handle some pretty ballsy stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah, the image, uh, for example, the uh, trail shot of the image, and, and, and of course, the ones I was going to ask about, the entrails movies by Triumph of the Will, and Triumph of the Will, over here we met, the Triumph of the Will. Um, so, you know, uh, has there been any problems because of some of those movies, those are strong content films, well, we, so was that, did that feed into your distribution problem? We've gotten some hate mail from uh, the neo-Nazis who have purchased Triumph because they're upset that uh, we made donations to the Holocaust Center. We wanted to make it very clear to everybody that we are not neo-Nazis. We don't sympathize. Exactly. And we went out of our way to uh, produce this in a certain way. Our uh, commentary is by uh, Dr. Anthony Santoro. Just an amazing commentary that really must be heard when you're watching the film. Just puts all the Nazis in their place, and the neo Nazis didn't like that. And we're very happy uh, about it. <laughs> you know, we're perfectly okay with them being unhappy at the end. I'm in total agreement with that. I mean, and it's an important film in film history. I right. Mean, it, it really right. needed to be preserved. And it was about. it was offered to us, and we thought long and hard about it. But we said, you know what? Someone's going to put it out. So if it's going to come out, let's do it the right way. Absolutely. And it's funny in the. Uh, uh, Entertainment Weekly, they compared us, Synapse, the small company, how we handled the film like that in the world. They compared us to how Image Entertainment handled Birth of a Nation, where that's a very large company, and they put out that controversial film with no commentary, no historical perspective. It's basically a hate film, and they just put it out. And essentially, as I recall, they put it out at an extremely low price, too. It's sort of like a bargain bin, so, so those people who think they're just getting silent movie, and, yeah, get a piece of propaganda. 